Hello and welcome to today's talk. Now, I was just checking on the CDC website this morning and they're still recommending COVID vaccines for basically all age groups, including young men. So I wanted to look at the data from Korea, looking at vaccine related uh, heart disease. And we'll compare that with the data from Denmark as well, because we're fed this mantra all the time that the cases of myocarditis are mild. But we're going to be looking now that some of the cases are by no means mild. And in fact, the first figure we're going to look at says that 19.8% of total cases of vaccine related myocarditis were actually severe. Now, this is of the cases that were reported, but it's still pretty high. So this idea that it's mild and you can just shake it off is just is just nonsense. But the, the idea that myocarditis is mild anyway is in my view, nonsense. It doesn't tell you anything about long-time sequelae, for example. But let's look, let's look at this data because it's actually pretty interesting. So it's 19.8% um, of total vaccine-related myocarditis was severe. Now, this is, uh, this is COVID vaccine-related myocarditis, Korean nationwide study, European Heart Journal, clinical research, so fully peer-reviewed. This is a proper this is a proper scientific uh, paper with all the, um, all the correct checks on it. It's a nationwide study in Korea. Incidents and outcome of COVID-19 vaccine-related myocarditis. Now, they've looked here at 44 million, <laughs> 44 million people. So um, basically, they've taken into account pretty well everyone who was vaccinated in the country. Now, it doesn't mean to say all of these were reported, of course, but this is taking into account the whole population. So pretty pretty impressive study. Now one of the variables here is there may be less myocarditis in Korea because um, it seems to me, I have no evidence for this, but I think they do more aspiration of injections than we do in Western countries. So if they're aspirating more vaccines, that might, you know, when you stick it in and you pull back to make sure it's not in a vessel, if they're doing more of that, um, that could artificially lower the rate. So if you're a Korean nurse or doctor, do let me know because I can't find any information on that. But anyway, we'll look at the data as it, as it is. So large number of people. Um, clinical course of vaccine-related myocarditis. Now, the diagnosis confirmed by experts. So they had a group of experts here. And these experts could tap into basically everything, radiology, pathologists, e everything you can imagine. So they had, the, and there was at least seven cardiologists on the panel. So they were able to diagnose this very accurately, accurately and they diagnosed it conservatively. That they underdiagnosed rather than overdiagnosed, so as not to confuse it with possible COVID induced uh, myocardial disease. So they were very cautious about this. So these are really minimum, these are really minimum numbers that we're dealing with here. Um, now they found 1,533 presumptive cases that doctors thought this looked like it, but they only confirmed 480. So they were very conservative in the way they recorded it. That's 1.08 per 100,000 people. Incidence was higher in men, of course, as we know with these things. Um, men 1.35 per 100,000, women 0.82. Uh, males aged 12 to 17, uh, 5.29, so way, way higher in this adolescent, young man, uh, older boy uh, age group. Uh, females over 70 were the lowest incidence, but it was still there, still there, um, 0.16 per 100,000 persons. Now, the CDC today, I checked on this, COVID vaccine is recommended for everyone aged six months and older in the United States for the prevention of COVID-19. This means that despite this data, the Centers for Disease Control are still advising 12 to 17 year old boys to get COVID vaccines. Now, you might think that's verging on criminal negligence. That they're still recommending this. Why have they not adjusted this as the data is now incontrovertible? Quite inexplicable uh, tardiness really from the Centers for Disease Control there. Very disappointing. Really quite hard to fathom actually. Um, now most of the adverse reactions are after the first or second dose, as you would expect a few more after the second dose. Uh, not so many after the third dose but still some. Now, compared to other vaccines, um, the vaccine-related vaccine myocarditis uh, after mRNA shots averaged out at 1.46, more for Moderna and less for Pfizer. But the uh, Oxford-AstraZeneca, for example, was much less. So we have a situation where the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine has been stopped in most countries. That's the adenovirus vector vaccine, much the same as the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the States has been stopped. And yet that causes much less vaccine-related 
myocarditis. Other side effects, of course, but not the vaccine-related myocarditis. <laughs> yeah. These are the numbers. And the, the, the significance between these was, was definitely there. Um, <clears throat> there was only one chance in a thousand that that, in fact, less than that, that this is a genuine finding. Now, Denmark, um, higher numbers in Denmark. So Denmark, Pfizer vaccine, 1.4 per 100,000. Moderna vaccine, 4.2 per 100,000 in Denmark. So higher incidence of myocarditis in Denmark, especially after the Moderna vaccine. And of course, Moderna are opening sites in uh, the United States, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom to produce huge numbers of new type of Moderna vaccines. So that might concern some of you. So that was the Danish data. But anyway, getting back to the, the study that we're on, uh, the Danish data was in 20, within 28 days. So uh, severe vaccine-related myocarditis, 95 cases. As I say, that's 19.8% of the total of vaccine-related myocarditis cases. 85 intensive care missions, uh, 36 cases of fulminant myocarditis. Fulminant means it's really severe disease. That's got a, a very, 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 very poor outcome. Uh, 21 cases required out-of-the-body extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. That's the most... So that's like more significant than ventilation. That's a pretty drastic intervention. Uh, 21 more cases of very severe adverse reactions. I'm not allowed to uh, mention the nature of that adverse reaction. But let's just say the people who suffered this adverse reaction are no longer communicating with us. I'm not allowed to tell you what that adverse reaction is, but um, these people are sadly no longer able to communicate with us in any way, shape or form. Um, and eight out of the 21 were sudden cardiac uh, S SCD stands for sudden cardiac de eh ah. um, I'm sorry, that's all I can tell you, but you can work out what I'm talking about. So sudden cardiac deaths, oops, I said it, attributable to uh, vaccine-related uh, myocarditis proved by autopsy. Um, all cases of SCD attributed to vaccine-related myocarditis were in younger men under 45. No, some were in younger women, but all under the age of 45. One person needed a heart transplant. Moreover, uh, SCD, sudden cardiac, should be closely monitored as a potential FAT uh, consequence. Now, the, the thing here is um, there's been a lot of cases of um, sudden cardiac people being no longer with us. Um, around the world, but these weren't checked to see if they were vaccine related. So really these should be checked to see if they were vaccine uh, related. It's just that in, in Korea, they did the post-mortem work to look at it and then they can tell and they can differentiate between vaccine and, and um, they, they did the autopsy work. They can differentiate between vaccine induced myocarditis and uh, COVID induced myocarditis. So, um, but of course, we, we just don't, uh, we don't seem to bother to do that. But the Koreans are a bit ahead of uh, us on that. Why aren't we doing more of that? You may wonder. Most common presenting symptoms, chest pain, typically three days after the vaccine, but one to 10 days. And here we actually have a graph that shows it. <coughs> so these, these are days. So we can see that most cases are what? Um, uh, the, f the first and second day after the vaccine. Um, incidence was highest in Moderna, followed by the Pfizer, and as we said, the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca, much lower um, rate for the adenovirus vector type vaccines. So um, Moderna, most cases of uh, vaccine-related myocarditis, then the Pfizer, and then much, much less the adenovirus vector, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca type uh, vaccines. Um, incidence highest in, in young men, typically after the first and second dose, and yet the CDC continues to recommend COVID vaccination for this category. How many of the other sudden uh, events that resulted in people no longer being with us, um, how many of these events around the world were related to uh, this uh, vaccine-related myocarditis? Um, we don't know because most times this study was not done. Um, but in Korea, it was done and they found it was much more significant, 19.8% of cases being severe. 
So CDC, time to change your guidelines, I would have thought. Really? Still, I, the idea that the United States is still advising vaccination for adolescent men with an mRNA vaccine is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. What are you guys up to? Uh, we can't say you're wrong, of course, because you're the CDC, but um, I'm asking what you're up to. Um, m maybe time to get up out of bed, have a cup of coffee and, and review your guidelines, because uh, some might think you're way out of date. OK, we'll leave that there. And um, as always, thank you for watching. I'll just leave you with one reassuring point, though. Um, this did, is reassuring that th th this graph here is showing that this is an acute episode. So it looks like... Um, if you had no symptoms immediately after the vaccine, and it's now months or, or a year or more since you had the vaccine, um, according to this data, your risk for this doesn't appear to uh, doesn't appear to exist because um, it looks like you've got away with it basically. Because after 42 days, as we see, there was no cases uh, whatsoever. Um, so a point of reassurance. Other sequelae could be longer term, of course, but this particular one, if you didn't have symptoms at the time. For people that did have symptoms at the time, um, we don't have uh, data on long-term effects of that, although the British and the American authorities are sure it's uh, mild and transitory. Um, if you want to trust the authorities, then that's their, their view. Um, as always, of course, any questions about your own health, go and see your own doctor, whatever you do. If you're worried about this, take medical advice, please. And... Uh, and, and get your situation worked out as well as possible. But for the vast majority of people, it's looking uh, promising after that time period. So there we are. Uh, thank you for watching.